This is a suggestion from a comment. I was also curious, and I've been hearing a lot about this company framework, so I figured it would be a good idea to check out their power adapter that is supplied with the laptops to see how it performs. It looks like it is a smaller size adapter at 60 watts, so there will be things we expect to see and things we expect not to see for this power level. I'm going to examine what modes of operation this adapter has and go over the basic adapter. I will answer some questions like, can it charge other things, and is it worth the money? In this series, I try to answer the question, which power adapter do I want to get? The videos get technical, so hang on, and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors to see how each one stacks up. If you want to help out the channel, see the links on my webpage or in the description. Patreon is now live, as well as the super button. Thanks to my current patrons and channel supporters. Okay, let's start in with the framework power adapter. This adapter has model F-R-A-N-C-H-O-H-0-B. It is a nondescript cardboard box. Opening the box, you find a power cable with an IEC 320C5 connector, which is three feet long, and a six foot USB C to C power cable. We'll test this in the USB cables round four video. Then the power adapter supply with a little sleeve around it. No extra plastic or peeling bits. This is good. The bulk is almost entirely from the power cables. There is no user manual or documentation in the box. Not much on the website either. This isn't so great. The box does say what modes it has, but we like endless warnings about not putting it in the toaster oven, right? The power adapter doesn't look too bad. It is a premium look and feel. The outer housing has a matte black finish and a logo on the top and the bottom. On one side, you find a single USB-C port. On the other side, you will find an AC power input connection. Another side of the device is adorned with the modes of operation and operation of the device. You plug it in and power comes out. It just streams all over the room, right? That's how electricity works. This adapter itself is actually made by Fifong Technology Co. LTD. Around the other side, we find some different logos. It looks like this adapter has a six in a circle, indicating the Department of Energy 6 compliance. It also has many different countries' safety listings, which is great to see. I see this one is using the Underwriters Lab for its US and Canada safety listing. I see many other countries listed here also, which is fairly typical from laptop power adapters from many manufacturers. In this case, I see this is really a USB-C power brick disguised as a laptop power adapter. The packaging for this one weighs 109 grams, on the heavier side, but less plastic at least. The power adapter weighs 233 grams with the power cord. This is actually pretty light. When compared to the Anchor Nano 2 though, it is about twice as heavy. It is a bit large in comparison with that smaller 65 watt offering from other companies as well. It could certainly be smaller, so hopefully that extra size is hiding some extra performance. Okay. Time to plug this thing in and see what it can do. The first thing I notice is the idle power consumption takes a long time to stabilize, but it does finally drop down to a very low level. Very impressive. This also maintains very low noise while doing this. This power adapter has a claim of Department of Energy 6 efficiency. This symbol is a mark that lets you know that power supplies meet a low enough idle power requirement and an efficiency level. This power adapter blows away the requirement and is way under what is needed for the idle power consumption. This thing will only use cents a year if left plugged in the wall. We will have to check later on if the efficiency is good enough. The framework power adapter has the normal modes of operation for a USB power delivery device. The current specification states modes of 5, 9, 15, and 20 volts for fixed output voltages that your device negotiates for. No 12 volt mode is available. This power adapter also has an adjustable output voltage mode called Programmable Power Supply, or PPS. This mode can help devices charge more efficiently and therefore faster. The power adapter has a 21 volt mode with up to 60 watts of power, but only 2.85 amps. That does mean Samsung fast charging is on the menu, but only up to 25 watts or so. Let's turn the power up on this one and take a look at its performance. The power adapter is supplying its 60 watts of rated power, no problem, on the direct current side, also known as the side you plug into. When we switch over to the AC side, the first thing I see with this power adapter is that it lacks power factor correction. It is all going to come down to that efficiency claim. If this adapter can really be extremely efficient, then maybe it can cancel some of the losses for lacking power factor correction. We will check this out later on. This is quite low though, even at the full 60 watts. Power factor correction is a technique to consume AC power as efficiently as possible. The higher the power factor, the lower the comparable current and therefore the lower the loss in wires and transformers that supply your power. The goal is to have the waves all look like the same shape as the yellow line, a sine wave. The power adapter lacks power factor correction, which all power adapters in this size range also lack. 
So comparing to other offerings, this is more or less par for the course. There is one thing about this adapter though, and that is its harmonic content is worse than many other offerings out there. This could be a design choice, or it could be an over-engineered solution. There will be a teardown of this adapter to find out if it's something a little over-engineered or is just what it is. In terms of the loss, you will pay for it. At full low, this adapter loses about 2% of its efficiency, which we will see shortly. The story on 230 volts is not better, but I'll go through the detailed data on this later. Overload is testing when the device safely shuts down when too much power is drawn. This can happen from a short circuit or misbehaving device. The power adapter tripped on overload at 66 watts. This is a safe limit and not cause for any concern. The adapter also recovers after an overload. The voltage levels were okay on this power adapter. Each mode held within the tolerance of the USB specification. This shouldn't have any issues powering lots of devices. The power adapter is acceptable for DC voltage performance. Here is the detailed data for this device. This is a tale of one adapter. The idle performance is great. It looks low on watts, relatively low on the volt amps, and is very good for the distortion for an idle state. Really everything you want to see in a power adapter. The adapter efficiency is also excellent, really class leading. This adapter does not take any concern for how the grid uses power though, so the current is very distorted. This means it does have very poor power quality score. At 60 watts, it doesn't really matter a lot unless you have a lot of power adapters. Because that efficiency is so high though, this does cancel out some of the losses that would be had with some other designs. This adapter does meet the Department of Energy 6 requirements and is fully compliant for those. When switching over to 230 volts, the idle power data is higher. This is expected and normal, but here again we see the idle power consumption is very good. The power quality on 230 volts did get substantially worse, and the efficiency in this case also didn't get any better operating on the higher voltage. This kind of makes this a mid-tier device. The losses cut about 2% again of that efficiency, but not a huge deal, but it's something. This adapter meets the EU energy efficiency requirements and is also fully compliant with those requirements. Okay, time to compare the data. I have tested quite a few adapters around 60 and 65 watts, so plenty to compare to. When comparing the idle data with others, the wattage is tiny. It sips watts and does it relatively cleanly. This is among the best choices for leaving plugged in kind of adapter. Unplugging them when not in use still wins. On the idle graph, this thing is better than a lot. The low power usage and the neatness of that power usage means it holds good power quality in this mode and low usage. When comparing the overall data with other adapters, this adapter ends up on the lower side. On these numbers though, the lower numbers, the difference between 80 and 60 is not that great. But the Amazon Basics at 99 is still taking the win here for the 60-ish watt range. On the average power consumption graph, the story is still visible. This drops to the bottom for the quality, but the efficiency keeps the actual wattage low, which is also good. Let's talk about value. Well, the framework is a moderate value. It is actually not that great. The Amazon Basic 65 watt adapter is still crushing everything, but that energy adapter I reviewed a while ago also is starting to make more sense here. Okay, well, there it is, another power adapter reviewed. The framework power adapter is maybe a little less interesting than I hoped for, but it is still a reasonable power supply. It compares favorably with some of the competition, but the value is a little under what it should be considering what it is. This adapter has many safety listings, which is nice to see. It also has several different modes of operation, so this can be used for charging lots of other devices as well. The framework power adapter is itself tiny, but it is made bulky by the wires that come with it, just like any other laptop adapter. The adapter met all of the energy efficiency requirements for a power adapter. I'd still like to see a power adapter with a little better power quality in this category, so something like this won't see much use by me, but maybe it is just what you need. I expect with the larger laptops being released by Framework, a larger power adapter will be contracted as well. Hopefully, they choose wisely. Okay, time to apply the sticker. This is tested and on the database, so you can take a look at how it stacks up. The efficiency is high, but the general quality of the power is lacking. Thanks for watching. I have a few videos in the immediate queue coming up. I will be tearing down this adapter as well as reviewing and tearing down the Dell 130 watt USB adapter. Check my webpage for upcoming videos. There's a schedule of release dates. I have too many more of these adapters to get through and many more videos in the future. Goodbye.